has all been about definitions, definitions of uh, things we talk about, things we learn, things we have been inspired by um, in this teaching, uh, no matter how long you've been in it or uh, been in a version of it, there, there has been talk about all these things, and I wanted to kind of define them a little more definitively, these words that get bantied about. Um, talked about God, definition of God. Talked about mindfulness, my version, um, not mindfulness uh, that you might think of, but mindfulness. We talked about that this month. We talked about the, um, the greatest law there is. There's a lot of spiritual laws, <clears throat> universal laws that... Um, you hear about, read about, etc. But what about the law of you? We talked about the law of you this month and defined that. Well, this week, in our final week of the theme of definitions, I want to talk about prayer in a way. Prayer is defined by the Oxford Dictionary as a solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God or an object of worship. It's an earnest hope or wish. And it's based on the Latin word precarious or precarious, maybe, meaning obtained by entreaty. So then I went to Wikipedia, <clears throat> and I know Wikipedia can be a little iffy sometimes, but Wikipedia says that prayer is an invocation or an act that seeks to activate a rapport with an object of worship through deliberate communication. Liking that so far. Also, as an act of supplication or intercession directed towards a deity or a deified ancestor. Hmm? Not liking that too much, or with the purpose of thanksgiving or praise, similar to forms of meditation or the use of charms or spells. Now, in New Thought, we say our thoughts are prayers. Our thoughts are prayers, which actually became a song written by a woman named Lucille K. Olson going like this. Our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts are prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. Now, if you've ever gone to a, a unity church service, which is part of the New Thought movement, you've probably heard this song. <clears throat> Most of them sing it. Very popular with, with that community. But the second verse is the verse that really practicalizes. <laughs> I don't think that's a name, but a pract uh, word. Practicalizes this concept, and it goes like this. Our thoughts are prayers, the tools that we create with. Our thoughts are prayers that spirit resonates with. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of mindfulness, and know that God is always there. And every thought becomes a prayer. You know, in the conclusion of the original Science of Mind and Spirit book from 1926, Ernest Holmes wrote this. When 51% of your thinking is health and life and power, that day, the 51% will swallow up, erase, kill out the rest. The day you, as an individual, 
through 51% of your thought pass beyond the perception of limitation, you will draw out of the universe everything you desire. Poverty will desert you and you will be emancipated forever. The day you think 51% of happiness, misery shall depart and never return. It is not then worth your, is it not then worth your time and your effort? And should it not be the greatest purpose in the life of any awakened soul to depict this principle as to emancipate himself? Yes, I say so. So Dr. Holmes says that all you need to do is to get to 51% in your belief and the universe takes care of the rest, right? He also codified a form of prayer that we use in this teaching. It's a form of affirmative prayer and many of the other New Thought uh, movement organizations and, and teachings use... Um, a version of affirmative prayer, not necessarily this five-step uh, process that Dr. Holmes uh, codified, but it is a process. It's a process that he called spiritual mind treatment, which in his words is an affirmation of the divine presence in and through all things, all people, and all events. Now, basically, it's a conversation with the divine within. It's a communion with the creative power of the universe. Dr. Holmes goes on to say in the Science of Mind book, treatment is not, this is really important, treatment is not for the purpose of making things happen. It is to provide within ourselves an avenue through which they may happen. Through which they may happen. Now, he doesn't mean may versus may not, but that the manifest manifestations that we have decided that we require to come through into our lives comes through a consciousness of allowing and a consciousness of knowing. We are putting ourselves into the frequency, into the vibration of that object, that idea that we have decided we require now in our life, in our experience. The title of my talk today is Treat, Move Your Feet, and Heal. Treat, Move Your Feet is a, a saying in New Thought, if you're not familiar with it, meaning that you don't just you don't just pray, you don't just affirmatively pray, you don't just say words, you don't even just imagine and, and live the feeling within you of experiencing that object, that idea that you have decided you want in your life. It's above and beyond that. You Yes, you treat, you know, you imagine, you feel, you envision, but you also move your feet. You also do what needs to be done to bring forth that. And you'll realize that. Your intuition will tell you, well, I need to make this phone call. I need to talk to this person. I need to look at the world in a peaceful way, no matter what's going on. As part of the month of definitions, I'm defining this, this tool this week called spiritual mind treatment. Now, spiritual mind treatment is a five-step affirmative prayer that treats your mind. Thus the word, spiritual mind treatment. You are treating your mind. And as you treat your mind to these maybe new ideas of peace, grace, gratitude, etc., you're thus treating your subconscious. And as you treat your subconscious, you're thus treating your belief system to what you have decided to be in your life. You are going to be this idea now. You are going to be this uh, person that, that owns such an object now. Your belief system to what you have decided is to be in mind, body, spirit, and experience. 
It's a physical and it's a practical tool that leads to a metaphysical and transcend transcendental reality, which then ends in the manifestation in your experience. Now, I want you to realize this. I want you to realize this physical tool that you're doing, this thing called prayer or treatment or uh, being mindful, all these tools, all these spiritual tools, which are also practical tools, create a metaphysical reality because it is in the metaphysical that these things are going to occur through the law of cause and effect. So it's, it's, I want you to remember that as you use these tools that we teach and inspire you to, to have in your life, these spiritual tools, that they're le leading you into a metaphysical and a transcendental reality. And in that, in that universal reality, in that divine reality, you manifest these things, these ideas into your experience. So I'm going to go through how this five step works. If you know about it, then you're going to be uh, reminded. And if not, this will be a new tool for you. Um, you, you hear us, uh, Caressa earlier did a spiritual mind treatment. I'll do one near the end of our broadcast. So you've heard these things, but maybe you don't know what the steps are. So here's the steps. It starts with what we call recognition. And what we're doing is we're recognizing the power that is the that there is. It's the proposition that there is one mind. There's one creative force in the universe. It's an energy. It's an energy, not an entity. It's an energy. It's the energy of the Big Bang. It's called by many names. And you can choose whatever name you want to call it. I don't care. It doesn't care. Just recognize that there is this force, this energy, this creative energy in the universe. And then you go into step number two. When that's established, you step into unification. Because what we know, what I tell you, um, not so much in the statement of principle we're highlighting this month, but in, in, our, in our purpose statement, that divinity, whatever you're choosing to call it, is within you. So now in the step, second step, we, we talk about unification. And in this step of unification, this is where we, we have the communion. This is where we make the phone call, so to speak, the connection. This is where the frequency, the wavelength, uh, wavelength linkage happens. And you can ohm, you can close your eyes or not, you can um, you can put yourself in a certain sitting position, you can ground yourself, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But in this unification, that's where it all happens. You know, they say once you do the first and second steps of spiritual mind treatment, the other three is just kind of the cherry and the whipped cream on top. You can also, when you're doing this, this, uh, this step, you can have various prayer positions if you want. If it makes you feel more connected to your spirit, you could do the Anjali Mudra, which is hands together at the sternum. You can do the, uh, as they say, they call it, I can have to step back. You can't quite see it. The carry the TV, carry to carry the TV kind of prayer uh, hands. Um, you could carry the widescreen, have a little more open and open yourself up. This is really great, actually, because you, you feel you open yourself up. And since this spiritual mind treatment takes a few minutes, it's sort of like the, um, the, the superpower power stance, you know, you're going to be holding this for, um, you know, two to five minutes. And uh, the stance opens you up. This is great. Maybe maybe it'll even go a little wider. Maybe it'll even go like this, sort of like this is how big my fish was or fish is that I just caught. That's a form of prayer. People pray like that. You could do that if you'd like. You could hold the baby. Hold the baby. Hold the baby. That's the way it is. See? Have you seen people pray like that? Yeah, hold the baby. Or uh, maybe the light bulbs. You'll see this a lot. 
especially in Pentecostal, but you can see this anywhere. I've seen it and you thought I've done it. You may, may have seen me do this when we're doing a prayer. I open myself up and I feel the energy that's around me. But that's sort of like the uh, light bulb. Sometimes you wave your hand, sometimes you don't. You could do that stance if you want during this prayer. You could do the, the gold post. Some people do that or the um, gold post <laughs> with heartburn, as one comedian was saying. But I love this. I love this. I love putting my hand on my heart, even if it's just one hand and the other arm is just moving because my arms move when I when I do a spiritual mind treatment. But, you know, when you put your hand on your heart, if you just let it sit there and you let it breathe and you take a moment. Wow. Things just change. You feel so much more connected to your self. And as you are connecting with yourself, you connect with the divine. And that's what's happening in this section. You're unifying. You're speaking the word that you are unified with this divine power that's going on right here, right now. But none of that is necessary. You don't have to put your hands in a special place. Like I said, this helps. Like I've said, this opens me up. Unification with that which is within you, that power, that presence that is within you right here and right now. It actually never goes away. It's always there. It's just in that moment we are purposefully unifying with intention to that great power of peace and grace and divine love that is within us. Then we go on to the third step. The third step is called declaration. It's called revelation. It's a. It's the moment when you reveal to maybe yourself as well as to the universe that is, that which is what you want, where you are declaring that I am the magnet to this experience. It's kind of the meat of this spiritual tour tool, and. And now is a good time for me to remind you that in New Thought, we don't believe in a prayer of beseechment, hoping, or wishing, or even wanting. Did a whole talk about wanting, not wanting. You don't want this. You have this. Now, we do declare, we do proclaim, and of course, we do especially know, because when you know you have it, it shows up. Now, in spiritual mind treatment, we do not abide by the idea that you have to supplicate, you have to arbitrate or negotiate. We don't do any of that. We do celebrate, we do appreciate, we do consecrate, we do some of the ATEs, the eights, but we don't supplicate. We're not supplicating to anything. We are realizing, we are knowing, we are unified with that divine power that is everywhere, that creative energy that created everything. We know, we know, we know. We do not have to compel some outside entity. Um, we don't even have to ask. I know there's a very famous book talk, talking about asking, and I uh, appreciate the, um, <clears throat> the idea of it, but we don't really ask. We know, we state. We declare with, with um, clarity and specificity um, what it is we have decided, what it is we are going to reveal into our lives. We do not deal with sort ofs. We do not deal with something likes. We are clear, concise, and specific, like I said. We're not wishy-washy, namby-pamby about what we have decided to have in our life. We are definite. We have made the decision. Living as if mind, body, and spirit is in that experience, using our imagination and feelings to envision that experience. That's where the physical morphs into the metaphysical. When the above the physical ideas start 
really happening and bringing forth into your life that which you have decided to have. Now, sometimes your work reveals ideas that have become hidden because we have some dark sides. We have some triggers that like to hide and that's okay. They may be in your way sometimes, not fun, but that's okay because as those come up and we are mindful of them and take responsibility for them and um, are non-judgmental about them, we can, like peeling an onion or an orange, slowly or quickly remove those from our belief system because it is according to our belief that the stuff that we want, whether it's peace of mind or a new car or whatever, shows up. Like I said before, this is serious fun. We have to look at this as serious fun. When we're doing a spiritual mind treatment, this is serious fun. Have a good time revealing into your life that which may be very serious. But it's a good time. Life is about having a good time. Not, a, not necessarily wasteful times, but good, happy, joyous times. When we stay with what we require and not get into resisting what we have or resisting what we don't want to have in our life, we will naturally heal, reveal, and experience that which we have decided to have. There's a great book called Working with the Law. And uh, Raymond Hollywell wrote it. And he said, the law does not require us to work over or against the things we do not want. But it does require us to work with and for that which we do want. We dare not give our time, thought, and energy to that which is opposed to what we want. And this is um, part of his law of non-resistance, if you read any of Mr. Hollywell's books. And part of a, it's part of the, the Buddhist um, teachings as well. We don't resist that which we want to not have in our lives anymore. We just know we have the opposite of it the antonym of it. That's what we do in this third step. We declare, we reveal that which we have decided to have as clear and as concise and as specific as you can be about what it looks like, what the experience feels like. Don't worry about the how how it's going to show up. You don't have to know that this person will do that and that person will do that and um, this house will be sold and, you know, this car will show up, you know, just what it looks like, what it feels like to have that experience, whatever that is, whether it's an object or an idea like peace of mind or a better relationship at work or with one of your family members, etc. Then we step into the fourth step, step into the fourth step with me, which is super easy. This is super easy stuff. This is gratitude and appreciation. You're going to love this because this is not about thanking God or the universe for granting your wish. Because A, we're not wishing for anything. B, we are not asking uh, God, please, please, please bring this to me. This step is part of the receptivity of that which you've decided to have in your life. You know, you receive a gift, what's it polite to say? Thank you. But you say thank you because you've already received, you've already received the gift. Here, here's a book for you, you know, congratulations. <gasps> thank you. I've already received the book. I am not thanking any sort of entity or, or even energy for listening to me. It's listening all the time. This Gratitude, this appreciation. Appreciation is actually a better word than gratitude or thankfulness. I appreciate that this is happening right now. I appreciate that I am revealing that which I declared 
to reveal in step three, because I have unified myself with that divine spirit and power and love and intelligence and wisdom that is within me. It's part this this appreciation, this gratitude and thankfulness is part of the treat, move your feet and heal. Because it is the acceptance of the manifestation that you have declared, you have decided you're going to have happening in your life. And of course, the last step is just release. Just let it go. Let it rock, man. Let it happen. Let it be. Let it activate itself. Let it delegate, illustrate, liberate, propagate, radiate, and demonstrate into your life. So now it's just time to celebrate. It's time to celebrate. You've spoken your word. You've imagined and felt the experience in your heart, in your gut, in your mind, in your whole being. So now it's just time to, to have at it. Have at that life right here, right now. It's, it's a time to be. It's a time to take action. Take action. It can show up in many forms, you taking action. You let your intuition inform you of what it's time for you to do. Uh, the universe will speak. The universe will speak to you and say, make that phone call. Go apologize to this, that, or the other. Meditate more. Do this, that, or the other spiritual tool. You need to step into that more. You start hearing that, and you start doing that, and you'll start seeing quicker and quicker and quicker those experiences that you have declared to reveal into your life showing up. Now, that may include doing more spiritual mind treatment, doing more of this five-step um, process. But remember, you're just you're peeling the onion. Sometimes, especially after a certain age, you got a lot of junk ideas going on and you have to peel that onion. You have to know that this orange, just this one last peel of this orange and whammo, here comes my wow life. The definition of spiritual mind treatment, the definition of treat, move your feet and heal is to imagine to envision, to feel, and of course, then to be that which you have decided to have in your experience in your life. You do that, you envision it, you feel it, you imagine it while you treat, while you move your feet in action, while you are healing. And then you just allow an experience and manifest and harvest your most magnificent life. Do that today, tomorrow, over and over again. Know, be, sit with that which you have decided to experience in your life and watch it as it becomes a part of you, as you use this or some version of affirmative prayer, which you can do while you're meditating as well. Watch it show up quicker and quicker and quicker. And watch the ones, the next one and the next one and the next one as you peel that onion, as you take off the skin of the orange and remove those junk ideas by pouring in the great and joyous and divine ideas. Watch those manifestations start jumping into your life, into your experience quicker and quicker and quicker you shall manifest by treating, moving your feet, and allowing yourself to heal your entire belief system. You will have a magnificent life. Thank you so much. Namaste.